Hello and welcome back to a kooky corner of YouTube, uh, back onto my desk where I am going to be showing you a little um, neurographic art uh, technique which can be used quite successfully for stress management especially. Um, it's one of those things that you can do and it will ease any stressful situations that you all might be having. Um, it can also help with problem solving um, because the process that you go through, it, it kind of rewires your thoughts. That's the, the intent of it. Um, and for this specific one, uh, we're going to be working with an exercise that is called 40 circles. Now, let me just show you a couple of examples before we go on. So this is the first piece that I did. Um, basically, ooh, I'll kind of come undone from there. But basically, it is 40 circles that you draw on your whatever size piece of paper. It doesn't really matter. Um, I'm obviously sticking to this size just for purposes of getting things done a little quicker. You could go large, you could go smaller. It really is up to you how you want to go with this. Um, this one I did in <coughs> coloured pencil because uh, I don't know, I, I kind of think I like the way that it feels when it goes down on the paper. So coloured pencil um, is nice to work with. But obviously, again, it's totally up to you what you work with. You could work in ballpoint pen. I might actually try one of these in a ballpoint pen at some point and, um, and show you how that works out as well. Uh, but because I was feeling in a coloured pencil mood, you know how these moods take me. Well, <laughs> today was a coloured pencil mood. And so this one was completed with the um, Brute Funa Macaron pencils. Um, I have, um, have a video coming out reviewing those. So do watch out for that as well if you're interested in coloured pencils especially. Uh, but yes, that one was done in the macaron colours, which is nice and light. And I've mixed five different colours together. And I'll explain that as we go along. Then I went on and did a darker version with some colours from my uh, Faber-Castell pencil set. That's the Polychromos. Um, again, five colours just mixed in, intermingled. And I think it adds a little bit of something to the piece itself. I'm just going to take a moment for a quick slurp of my hot chocolate. Mm -hmm. It's got some marshmallows melted in there as well. If you're wondering what that weird stuff was on the top, <laughs> just a quick slurp. That's better. OK, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how I got to this point. Now, the basis of this is that we're going to draw on our sheet of paper. And I've got one of these dual Caran d'Ache bicolor pencils. I'm going to do it in the red this time because the colors that I've chosen for this one are going to be these lovely warm tone colors. I've picked out five different ones that I'm going to use and we are going to draw our circles and then I'll go through the process with you. So what you want to do on your piece of paper is to start figuring out where your circles want to be. And what we want to draw, because it's called the 40 circles exercise, <laughs> guess this, we're going to do about 40 circles. It doesn't have to be completely exact. It could be less, it could be a bit more. What you want to do is to try and fill your page with circles. I try and tend to stick to the 40 because it's kind of easy just to count along just to get 40 circles. You have to kind of take account of which way you are drawing your circles. Now, I tend to go from both sides. Some people do them like literally just like that. The smaller ones I do. When it gets to the bigger ones, I tend to try and do both sides, but you can just keep going round and round. I hope you can see this. Um, the pencil is a red one for a change. Just because I was going to do some warm tone colours, 
And what you want to do is you're overlapping your circle. Sometimes your circle could come off the edge of the page. That's quite nice because that connects you to outside of the page, which is quite important when you're problem solving. They don't have to be completely perfect. Let's see how many we've got now. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I'm going to connect another one there. And you can put circles inside circles. Actually, the process of drawing the circles themselves is quite relaxing. Really relaxing process. And you want to get yourself about 40 circles in total. I'm going to have one coming off the end there. Another one there. Uh, another one there. Gonna have a little one there. And the idea is that these circles you could also think of as moments of happiness within your life, moments of gratitude. Maybe somebody smiled at you and it made you feel good, or they complimented you. And a circle could represent something like that. Circles can represent anything, they're also quite representative in themselves. A circle is something that's a cycle in your life, isn't it? I'll draw another one in there as well. I think we're probably getting to the point where we've got enough. Once you feel you've got enough circles on your page, then that's the point you stop. Um, so I think I'm going to stop mine there. If you felt so inclined, what you could do if you wanted to was to take is to take some neurographic lines. You know, we mentioned those in that first uh, video that I did on neurographic art, where you would use a neurographic line and how to draw those. Uh, but I don't I don't feel I need that at the minute because what I have on the page, I think I've got enough to be going on with definitely got enough to be going on with here. And this whole process is, is two parts. So the first part is the drawing of the circles, which we have completed here. Don't be too precise about it. Don't start fussing over um, how you've drawn them or whatever. This is, this is what we have. So we work with what we've got. And then as I say, go to your coloured pencils or ballpoint pens or marker pens, whatever you want to use. Today, as I say, I'm using these and I am going to just intuitively pick out a pencil that I want to work with. As we did with the neurographic art that we did in the first video, if you haven't seen it, do pop back and have a look because it's quite an interesting process in itself. But this one is so good for stress management and I can't stress it enough as you do it it's so restful and and it clears all kinds of like blockages that you might be thinking about it's just really nice to do and as I say so relaxing so as with that first piece we're going to look for the connections again and what I said about the connections is um, we have to do the rounding out. And the rounding out is the second part of this um, whole exercise. So the circle drawing is one part. The rounding out is the second part. Now this can take a lot of time depending on how many pieces and connections you've got to draw. I suggest that you find an area that you want to work in, start off with. And I'm going to start from the left hand side. I don't know why I've made that choice, but again, it, that could be relevant. It could be something that I need to solve on a left hand side of <laughs> something. Uh, so looking at this connection here, just going back over what we need to do, we need to round out that area. So we're rounding it out and colouring it in because what we don't want is any areas where we've got points of anger or confusion. And see, just literally going in and rounding it out. And if you want to extend that into your line of your circle, do that as well. Again, that's not round enough. So we're rounding it out. 
making sure we've got no angry arrow pointing because no one wants any angry arrows in their life do they <laughs> so i'm taking that round i quite like the fact that you can actually just color in the lines and you just don't need to worry about how neatly you've drawn your circle because as you go around and do your rounding you can correct any weird looking lines that you might have had while you were drawing your circles so rounding out those bits there coming down to this connector round it round it don't forget the insides of the rounding as well because you've also got lines of connection there color it in take it round Some of your circles might look a bit like ovals and that's also fine it doesn't matter it doesn't have to be perfect because the whole process is looking and seeing here's another one so we're going to round and round and round <laughs> done like a roundabout thing is about a roundabout you get on at one point you go round and round in circles and you can get off at a completely different point and that's kind of how this works it's maybe when you get on the roundabout you're quite angry and frustrated about something or you're just really stressed about something and we're going to go round and round and round and we'll all embark at a different point and when we get off we might not be so angry so that's kind of the the idea as you go to the edges of your page as well you'll want to just round off those edges too and sometimes you'll find that if you're in a, a piece you might end up making new circles, especially if you get to the smaller conjunctions. You might find that you make new circles within a circle. <laughs> so we're doing the rounding here, taking that round, making sure we've got no pointy edges. You can see that point there, then so that has to be rounded. Yeah, and color it in. And then that point there has to be rounded. That point there. You're getting the, you're getting the drift of this, I hope. <laughs> now in this one, that's what I'm saying about the really tiny spaces, you might just have to round it out and then just, you leave a little tiny circle in the middle, which is quite nice in itself. It's like cells, isn't it? So anywhere that you want to round out. You can then go in with your pencil and define those areas. There's a point there and we want to round that point out. This bit here we have to round out. It's so, I, I can't even explain to you how relaxing this is. It's just such a nice exercise to do. And it's to kind of take a note of how you feel when you're doing this exercise so that you can then record how you feel when you've done it. If you feel you've got an aversion to drawing circles, um, it could be that you're one of these people who find, maybe you find circles a bit boring. Circles, boring, just going round and round and round. It could be that you're, you're one of those people who likes adventure, likes uh, conflict, not conflict in a bad way, but likes having some challenges to go against. And But also just take note of that feeling as well. It will tell you something about yourself when you are completing these exercises because 
that's the whole point isn't it we we all want to find out about ourselves and how we tick what makes us do the things that we do or react in the way that we do and it it is a a meditative thing to do it's quite nice to do it with if you wanted to with some music in the background preferably music without any words so something that's obviously um, an instrumental or some classical music or whatever takes your fancy it's, it's quite a nice thing to do or complete silence complete silence is something that we don't ever really have much of nowadays unless you live somewhere um, out in the countryside and e even then you will have noises from um, from animals and birds outside so silence is something sometimes to um, to try and find so maybe you want to do this in a complete silence and all you'll be able to hear is the sound of the pencil or the pen on the paper as you find your points of conflict and round them out. And this you could do in all one, one colour if you wanted to. I'm going to swap it out because I quite like the thought of just blending in different colours. So from where I was there, there's a little bit there that just needs rounding out completely. You see about that little tiny circle there? And anywhere your lines cross, anywhere you have a conjunction of circles, then you're going to be finding spots to round. So yeah, that silence is sometimes something that you will enjoy. Some people hate it, don't they? Some people absolutely loathe the silence. And I can understand that. Sometimes it's sometimes it's a connection, isn't it? Listening to some kind of sound. I know um, I have uh, family members who really don't like just sitting silently because having something, having some noise in the background gives, it's, it's like company, isn't it? A lot of people put on television or radio just to have that connection with someone. People think of like their favorite DJs as, as friends because these people are on in the background and you get to know them as you listen to their shows that's also understandable as well but when i think when you're doing something like this it's nice to either have some very quiet instrumental music if that's your bag if you don't like total silence so you can see how this is going it's kind of relaxing isn't it i think so let me know in the comments if you don't find it relaxing. <laughs> I, I do find it relaxing and finding all these little points and colouring them in is very therapeutic to me. Sometimes you'll have circles like this one that don't connect to anything. Now it is your choice as to whether you want that circle to connect. I quite want this circle to connect, so I'm going to take it over to this line. Obviously remembering to round it out and connect it there as well. So it's then connected in to everything else. And you'll find that as you go along, you'll find different, I can see a couple here, there. But it really is up to you whether you want to take them into a connection point sometimes that could be a point of focus where you think why isn't that one resolved what can I do to help resolve that and it's just being in touch with your own thought processes I'm going to continue with this now and I'm going to 
continue to um, add in my different colours but I'm for the purposes of making this not six hours long <laughs> I'm going to speed it up for you and I will put some music on in the background but hopefully it won't be too intrusive and you can see my colour choices and how this will develop so that's what we're going to do now So here we have an almost finished piece. I do believe I'll probably go back in <laughs> and see if there are any points that I've missed. But that's the joy of it. It's kind of just looking for those connections, looking for those resolutions to things that that helps with your um, with your mental health. Basically, it helps you make connections, even if you don't do anything like this for that particular reason if you just do it for the fact of drawing the circles 
and using it as a relaxation then I think that's a job well done. So there we have it. Have a go at your own 40 circles exercise and let me know down in the comments how you get on and how much um, it helps. Uh, also if it doesn't help you maybe you could examine that a little bit and tell me that it didn't really do anything for you. <laughs> Hopefully it does. I'm hoping that this is really relaxing for uh, anybody who likes to take it on and try it. Um, as I say, use whatever you have um, to create something that's relaxing and uh, resolving for you. I hope you've enjoyed this. Again, like and subscribe if you want to see some more of these because I will be going back into this subject and doing some different things. So please pop back and see me again. And uh, until then, have a lovely week. Take care, my lovelies.